Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. So in this video, I wanted to bring up a common problem that I recognize in a lot of my students. Uh, if you've been uh, familiar with my channel for very long, so before 2022, uh, I kind of had a hiatus there here where I didn't really make much content from my YouTube channel because I was teaching. I taught at Northwest College of Art and Design for approximately six years or so, uh, but then we relocated and so I was no longer teaching there, so I thought, hey, let's bring back the YouTube channel. So that's what I'm doing now. But anyway, uh, one of the common problems I noticed in my students was whenever they were doing UVs. And so UVs is a extensive topic, um, so it's not something we're going to touch on in great detail in this video, but I wanted to bring up this one particular issue. So for example, here I have a cylinder, and let me bring up the UV editor from the UV menu here. So when doing UVs, and especially with cylindrical shapes. I have a particular method I'd like to use. Uh, this is obviously just a simple cylinder. It doesn't really need anything special to be done with it. But if it was something more complex, like a candlestick, or perhaps a uh, the handlebars of a motorcycle, or a steering wheel of a vehicle, or, or, or some sort of you know cylindrical tube-like shape. Uh, what I typically would suggest to my students for doing the UVs is a couple different methods or steps I should say. So for example I would select the object and go to create camera based UV mapping and when I click on this it will project from my camera angle you can see here I'm actually going to make this a little bit darker perhaps and maybe see it a little bit better the UVs are projected onto the cylinder from the same angle that my camera was looking at it which that's not a big deal what the purpose of that is it gets rid of all the UV seams that are currently in the objects. And I'm going to grab both caps and I'll cut those under the cut and sew menu cut. And then I'll grab one of the vertical edges along or edge loops along the cylinder shape and cut that as well. And then with all three of those cuts made, two around the caps and one down the the length of the tube. I can go over here to my UV toolkit, which you can find under the view menu, or sorry, not view, tools menu, show UV toolkit. Mine says hide right now because it's currently showing. Go to the unfold section and click unfold. And then it will spit out something like this, which is unfolding those three particular cuts that I've made into their own separate UV shells. I can grab this edge, I can say straighten shell, straightens it like so. And now I have my different UV components, and you know, I can do other things to them. However, one thing that seems to have been a very common issue is what would happen is that the students would find that they would have accidentally created a second UV set. So really quick, let me just show you what that looks like. So here we have the cylinder. I went and did the remapping, or sorry, the UV mapping process again, uh, this time using kind of causing the mistake to happen on purpose. And so let's just say, just again, as an example, I wanted to bring this model into a program like Substance Painter. All right, so here we are in Substance Painter now, that same cylinder. But if I were to switch my viewport, you'll notice here that the UV layout that I'm getting for my cylinder, see here, these two large circles, and then this little one in the middle. If I go back to Maya, the UV layout that I'm expecting it looks like this, with a large square UV shell for the uh, length of the cylinder and then the two caps. But I'm not getting that because I have a second UV set. So under UV sets here in the UV editor, you'll notice I have one called Map 1 and another one called UV Set 1. And the reason why this happens, it seems, is that for whatever reason, if I go to the Create Camera-Based Options, you can see there's an option here, a checkbox that says create new UV set, and it's on. If I go to edit reset settings, it turns off. So the default is for this to be off. So if you uh, have experienced this before, where the UVs from your model in Maya do not match the UVs that you expect in another program like Substance Painter, it's probably because of something like this, where this is turned on when it shouldn't be. And this is what I've discovered is happening and again this is after like six years of teaching there's the first few years i'm like i don't know what you did but you have a second uv set i'm not sure how and eventually i finally discovered that oh 
you have this checkbox in the options here set. That's why you're creating these second UV channels. And Substance Painter is an example of a program that ignores the second UV channel by default. It looks at the first one, which in this case, we haven't done anything to. If you look in the UV set menu here, at the very bottom you'll see two uh, listed here, in my case, one called Map 1, the other is UV Set 1. If I click on Map 1, oh, lo and behold, I'm seeing what Substance Painter is seeing. UV Sets, UV Set 1, and now I'm seeing this. So, number one, if you ever find this problem where you exported something, the UVs look like this, you go into the other program and the UVs look like something else, first thing I would suggest looking at is your settings for how you created it. Like if you use this particular uh, method of using camera-based projection, for example, but if you look at any of the other ones, say for example, automatic, you'll see here that it has lots of different settings. At the very bottom, create new, v create new UV set is a setting that this option also has. Go to create like planar, for example, create new UV set is an option. So they all have this checkbox as an option for how the UVs are projected. So it's possible, that'd be the first thing I would check, it's possible that you have one of those turned on. So how do you fix this without having to like go back, like go to map one and now do the whole UV thing again, which in this case it wouldn't be very hard, it's a very simple object. But if you had something more complex, that would be a big deal, right? And I have this UV set menu copied over here just to make it easier to switch back and forth like this. So really, obviously, you can see up here, we have several options for how to manage our UV sets. We have, first of all, we have a UV set editor, which looks like this. And we can click on the different UV sets here in the UV set editor. We can say rename them. We can make a new UV set here if we wanted to. We can delete them, copy them, and so on. So there's definitely this as an option. So I can click on UV set 1, just hit delete, for example. It removes it. Undo that. I can, you know, click on one and say, you know, copy it or whatever. But what we're going to do instead, though, we're going to use the settings we have here under the UV set editor. We have copy UVs to UV set. So I have my current UV set one, the second UV set active. This is the UVs I want to keep because th those are the UVs that I worked a lot on and, and got set up just right and then realized, oh, I'm in the wrong UV set. I can copy these UVs to the other UV set. So I go to copy UVs, the, the active ones, UV set one, copy UVs to UV set, and I can choose from the list here the other UV set map one. And now if I go back and forth between the two UV sets, they're both the same. And now that map one has been copied from the UV set one, I no longer need UV set one. I can select it and say delete current UV set. Boom, and that removes it. Then we also have here create a new empty one, rename it, and so on. So that's how you would fix that without having to like redo all that work. So now that I've copied the UVs from UV set one to map one, and I've removed UV set one, I can grab my cylinder and re-export it. Back here in Substance Painter, I can go to, I can either make a new Substance Painter file and just open it with the new uh, FBX, or I can go to edit project configuration, and here I can select a new FBX. I'll just select that one again and hit OK. And now it updates the cylinder to the new one, which has the UVs adjusted the way that I want them to be. And I can do whatever. OK? So just wanted to, sh to make this video because it was a very common issue that I've noticed. I noticed in my students over time. And again, it took me a long time. I shouldn't have taken me that long, but it did. It took me a long time to realize what was happening. Because all I just kept saying was, I don't know how you did this. You made a new UV set, but here's how you can copy. I did the whole, you know, copy from one UV set to another trick for them so they could see how to fix it. But I finally realized over time how it was happening to begin with. You know, it was they had this checkbox uh, active when they shouldn't have or didn't want to have. So again, just if you find this happening to you where all these UV sets are just randomly being created over and over again, go to, again, your options for how you're projecting. They all have... Create new, v, create new UV set as a checkbox to, to select. Just make sure those are turned off. And uh, that should hopefully fix, you know, at least 90% of those instances of happening. So in any case, I hope that was useful. Uh, if you ever have that happening to you, hopefully this would be a fix and you no longer have to have that as an issue.
uh, definitely uh, feel free to like and subscribe now that I'm com coming back to YouTube with my channel. I'm hoping to have more of these videos coming out on a more regular basis. If you have any uh, suggestions for future video topics uh, using Maya or, you know, at this point, I'm happy to branch out. We don't necessarily have to stick to Maya. We can go into Substance Painter and other things. I'm happy to do that now, but feel free to let me know in the comments or so on. But in any case, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.